Happy Sunday morning. Thanks for checking in with us this week, guys. This week, we're going to show you how we wired in the distribution box. Um, also, we're going to show you Laura swapping out some windows. We talked a little bit about that last week, but I found some extra video. So we'll show you some of that. Uh, and then uh, we'll be geared up uh, next week for the bulk of the work that we did with my dad here. He just got here this past week, and uh, we're super excited. So hang tight and uh, check out this wiring, uh, the distribution box. So because of the way that uh, we're installing cabinets here with these rails uh, and our desk is going to go here, uh, we couldn't use a traditional gang box. So this is a pretty shallow gang box and uh, that's what I'm working on installing now. All right, so we've got a couple electrical outlets all but installed. So the only thing we don't have installed are the ground, the bare ground wires here and uh, those need to connect to this. But uh, somebody told me that the code is that you can't have both of them going around the screw. You have to make a pigtail and then put the pigtail around the screw. So I'm gonna find out if that's true. Assuming it is, um, I need to get some wire nuts because the one I have isn't big enough. So that's one outlet. This is the other. So I've had a new tradition this week and it's going to the bus first thing in the morning. Which, on one hand, I'm a bit of a morning person, I don't really mind, but uh, it's just hard to squeeze it in, and uh, you gotta find ways to do it, and this is the time that makes it the easiest. So it is 6.28, I'm headed to the bus. A productive early morning got the distribution box in uh, got some holes cut in the back of the cabinet and fed some wires through and then got the first two outlets installed uh, had a little bit of a problem the last time I went to do it um, because we're using shallow gang boxes um, I'm a novice at this anyway but when you add in the fact that the shallow gang boxes leave you little to no room to stuff extra wiring um, I had multiple outlets on the same circuit, which is normal because you can have wires in the back, but on a shallow box like this, there's no room to have extra wires in the back. So we had to run a new circuit to each, uh, each outlet. So I've got the first two done. The third one's in there. I'll show you right now. All right. So there's the first outlet, got another circuit running to the second outlet, and then we'll have to get a, another circuit running to the third outlet. Um, but here's the distribution box. So this is going to be all of our, our DC 12 volt items. Uh, and then down here is the 110. Uh, we'll put some circuit breakers in here uh, and run some lines to there. So cut out some holes in the back to feed some wiring through. And here's where we stand right now. I'm really happy with how tidy this is getting. Um, before it was just a whole clump of wires on the floor, which I'm, which well, I guess we still have, but 
the fact that it comes through one spot and, and these are all going to be cut off. Um, I left these really long and one of the reasons is because the box is originally going to be up here. Um, it was actually going to be in the side and uh, I was thinking the lines would have to come in here and then go all the way up and then I wanted to leave some extra space but because it's not up there um, don't need all that extra space extra line all right so just finished wiring the dc side of our uh, distribution box so all of our 12 volt appliances and lights are uh, wired up obviously we don't have the battery system yet but uh, it's all in the box so i'll show you that right now all right so here we've got the uh the dc side wired in you can see all the hot wires here and uh, all the grounds down here and uh, they come in through the back of the cabinet and we'll tidy this up as we go, but uh, that's what we're looking at. If you guys run electrical before, comment below if you've got any tips from here on out. Uh, anything I'm overlooking, uh, let me know. What kind of mistakes have you made in the past? Uh, we've made a few and I'm sure we'll take some time to get into those. The next morning. Moments later. got to the bus to uh, wire in some circuits uh, some circuit breakers and we don't I can't find the um, can't find the box cutter the knife so I can't cut these wires open and we were just here yesterday and I have no idea where they could be and Laura's on a conference call at work so she's not responding to my text messages I have looked everywhere twice so we left it outside. She was scraping decals off, but I don't think she was using that. I think she was using the scraper. Wow. This is not where this goes, if anybody was curious. It's probably me. So I think I just earned us a couple new YouTube followers. Uh, the maintenance guys are fixing the fence here on the back of the back of the property at the storage unit. And uh, he came up to ask how much the buses cost at auction. So we started talking, I invited him in, he was checking it out. It's giving me advice on some different things. Obviously maintenance guy, a bit of a jack of all trades. So he gave me a good idea for um, uh, when we tile our bathroom, which we'll get to later on, but uh, we'll talk maybe about that. So if you're watching, appreciate the advice and uh, yeah, follow along. Uh, the box wired up I think we've got everything in there except for the shore power is not connected obviously 
um, but we don't even have that like wire hooked up yet. Um, okay, so we don't have the circuit breaker full. We've got, I think, two, four, six circuits in there plus the main circuit. And uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna roll with for now. So uh, let's show you what it looks like all wrapped up. Finished out, sticks out mm, just a little bit, but this is gonna be under a, under a desk here. So and we've got panel here, some circuit breakers down here. We'll put some fuses in up here. And then there we go. So if you're looking at one of these, I'll put the link in the description below. We bought this on Amazon. This cover here attaches with four screws uh, on top of the main board, and then this just fits in. It's real simple. This isn't a uh, complicated door here. Flashback. windows before we reseal them um one thing i didn't see in any in anyone else's video was a shot of how clean they were making the windows so um i kind of assume they're cleaning them completely but if not here's our video that's going to show you how clean we're doing it so this is kind of the before i've scraped off all the goop um i just used a blade like this um putty knife i guess um scraped off all the goop you can kind of see this dark stuff is what has come off like that gross so then i've just scraped it down as much as i can put a little acetone on a rag and with a little elbow grease you can see it kind of getting dark and going like gumming up on itself which is good okay cleans up just like that and the reason I'm being so particular and cleaning this completely clean is that I don't want any silicone residue on here because silicone doesn't stick to silicone. Um, so you want to make sure you have a really nice clean surface so there is no risk of parts of it not being sealed. And especially for us because these windows that we're swapping out and exchanging are going to be in front of our desk where our computers and all kinds of electronic stuff will be and our entire electric system and fuse box and all that. So we don't want to risk rain or any other water coming in and messing that up. Ooh, I'm nervous. A flashback. almost too easy if it goes right. Something going easy on a bus belt can be kind of scary. Things don't only go easy. Easily. But I'll take it. 
So this uh, specific foam sealer tape that I'm using is supposed to be good for three years before needing to replace it, which is really great. The other one that we had looked at was really thick. And again, that's why I didn't want to use it because I didn't want to put too much pressure on the hinge and make it, I don't know. I want to put too much pressure on the hinge and make it like stretch too much and bust or something. Someone watching probably is like, that's not a thing. Comment that if that's what you think. So I'd love to know. Um, but no, uh, we use this one, the other one up to five years. This is staying good for five years, but it wasn't as, um, it was thick, but also it wasn't as, as soft. So my concern was that with all these ridges that are in the window, that the other one wouldn't mold to those ridges the way this one is supposed to. Um, so that was my concern. I want to make sure all those ridges are filled up in with the sponge instead of foam. And um, well, we don't want water to come in, so. Okay, so I'm going to show you before, and then I'm going to shut the door, window for a little bit. I'm going to show you an after, and hopefully we'll see that all the ridges are in. So this is the foam we're looking at. So I'm not too sure this corner is looking a little sketchy. But, but I'm hoping that it'll like push and all these kind of gaps will get squashed in. So that's a before. We'll shut her and see how it looks after. Also, a little tip, if you have a window like this, just so you know, you really should not pull from here. This is a handle, so you should pull your door in like that, and then latch it. Too much pressure will snap this little guy right off. So, sealed up, latched in, we'll, uh, we'll let that foam kind of do its thing and see how it does in a little bit. My video got turned off because the temperature was too high and my phone got too hot. But um, I just want to show you sealing up the window we replaced over here. This is not the emergency window, it's just regular window. It's probably a little sloppy, but I don't see any cracks, so I feel really good. I'm going to lean over. Ooh, ah. This is the bottom of the emergency window. I feel pretty good about that. I think that looks pretty good. Couple little bubbles, but. Ooh, got a little on the window there. Whoops. So if uh, if you get some on the window, like I did all over, apparently. Um, acetone, we'll get that off, little razor. It's actually fine if it gets on because you can just get it right off. It's just messy, so you don't want to do that if you don't have to. Also, our parking lot has been taken over by these guys. One, just about there. Two, three, four, five. So if your Amazon delivery is delayed, it's probably because they're sitting here next to our bus. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna turn, let's, um, probably a little quieter in here. I'm gonna open this emergency window up. It's probably been, I don't know, 30 minutes since we did the tape. Okay, so far so good. Nothing fell off. That's good. Oh wow, you can't even see. Oh, you can't even see the impression. Huh. That's not what I expected. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, so we're looking kind of right in that dark gap that you can't really see. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week or we'll see you another time.